Hey guys, Noe B here with South Texas Contender, and I'm here with the owner of Ming's Martial Arts in South Texas, uh, Daniel Duran. Uh, Daniel, how you doing, buddy? Feeling great, Noe. <laughs> Feeling great tonight. Uh, well, actually, I know Daniel. I've known Daniel for a good while, and uh, we actually met in Houston when uh, he made his first debut uh, for Texas Rage uh, 2007. Uh, what, what, what inspired you to actually step into the cage? You know, uh, back then it was just a matter of bringing authenticity to our program. You know, uh, MMA was, uh, you know, really starting to take off. And as a small school in Houston, you know, I had to reach a point where what was the next challenge, you know, as far as uh, testing my skills. Um, I had participated in a couple of world Sanda, uh, you know, uh, tournaments, uh, which is, uh, you know, a kickboxing uh, style of uh, fighting. And had some success there, and uh, you know it was just uh, it was just destiny, man. You know you yeah. came around knocking at the door, uh, looking for gyms, looking for fighters, and I was yeah. just at the you know in the right mindset that that's what I was looking for, and so it was just a, a perfect combination of, of timing. You know you came at the right time, yeah. and uh, and I remember uh, he you know he mentioned that he he fought in uh, Sanda, which is, is Chinese full contact. Um, you know, so it's basically the same thing as MMA with takedowns, right? Correct, correct, that's explain right. explain to people what Sanda is. Yes, yeah, Sun Xiao or Sanda uh, full contact fighting is uh, the Chinese full contact the form of kickboxing, which is, you know, uh, kicks, strikes, elbows, knees, and all forms of takedowns, tackles, sweeps, throws. Uh, there's just no ground game. Yeah, and that definitely helped you out on your first debut. I saw that, and, and uh, you won uh, with a spectacular with TKO. That's right. And um, th that was a great fight. Uh, not only were you, you just competing in Sanda, you were actually a gold medalist. Right? That's right. Like I said, I had some success there where uh, in the first uh, uh, world tournament I entered, I placed, uh, took home a bronze uh, in my division. And then the, the last time I competed, I did. I was able to come home with the world gold medal uh, in the Sanda uh, tournament. And uh, definitely one of my proudest moments. Well, I mean, yeah, I definitely get excited watching you get in the cage fight. And uh, you're still fighting at the age of 40. And you're looking young, younger and younger, man. Uh, what can you tell us about this preparation for this upcoming event, January 17th, at the Jacob Brown Auditorium? Well, just a quick correction. I actually turned 41 uh, a couple weeks ago, so, you know. I'm but I was uh, 40, 40 sounded a little bit better, man. I'm trying to back you up. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, this time around, uh, you know, I was, I was able to get on the Hero FC card in June. And uh, it was a, there was a big gap from my last performance with yeah. Texas Rage in the Cage. So um, getting the ring rust out, I learned a lot from that camp, had made a lot of mistakes in my training as far as uh, overtraining and, and doing heavy sparring up until the end, which led me, you know, led to some injuries that kind of, you know, played into my, the psychology of my preparation. Uh, so again, learning from that experience the last few months, uh, putting the right time into my conditioning uh, so I can definitely feel like a better, stronger athlete. Um, along with getting lined up some tremendous sparring partners. You know, my last opponent, Ray Banda, is now one of my main training partners. And so, again, just learning a lot from, from those guys uh, and uh, uh, putting in the time where at this moment, three weeks you know, prior to the fight, uh, I feel exactly where I want to be. And, and healthy as well, huh? Exactly. That's the main focus. At my age, you're know, really paying attention to how my body feels, the rest and recovery side of training. That's where I missed the boat last time. So not making those same mistakes. That's one of the biggest mistakes in mixed martial arts that, that I've seen over the years is that a lot of fighters train to the limit where they're getting hurt, they're getting injured, especially they're getting injured the week of the fight. And to most promoters or most, most camps, they're like, who gets hurt the week of the fight? You know, you shouldn't be sparring anymore. I mean, you've already been doing the training. And, and at this point, you actually have enough time to prepare for the fight. The fight's right around the corner. Uh, it's, it's a few weeks away. And uh, I know you've been training hard. Tell us a little bit about what you've been working on, uh, your, your, your striking, your ground game. You know, tell us uh, how you feel with that. And Put, your I've been uh, working a lot with my hands, getting, my, uh, getting in, uh, working my timing with my hands, getting in at the right time, working my angles, and then, of course, uh, putting it all together, the complete package. You know, I want to be comfortable in any space. So putting in the same you know, uh, focus with my ground game uh, for, for quick uh, uh, attacks. You know, uh, fortunately for myself, uh, 
the uh, VP Nogi uh, Jiu Jitsu team that I'm uh, gratefully a part of, uh, Victor Poza's Nogi Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, that's kind of our MO is, is get in there and be aggressive and attack. We don't like to just sit around and wait for things to happen. So if it goes to the ground, again, I'm going to be aggressive and try to finish the fight as quickly as possible. Um, at the same time, uh, working on hitting without getting hit, you know, uh, working with some really great guys like yourself and, uh, you know, again, help. <laughs> I don't want to throw no names in there, man. Sure, you know, no, just, you know, help me be smart. You know, yeah. that, that's the one thing I definitely pride myself in there is not getting in there and just being a brawler, but getting in there and being technical, being smart, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, not taking as, as the damage. You've been you've been doing a, a lot of Muay Thai as well, too, right? Correct. That's right. Training with Daniel Ornelas. He's been a tremendous asset this camp as well, helping me just uh, work the fundamentals of, of my Muay Thai game. Uh, again, just adding to my overall, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, style of fighting. Uh, it's just uh, really uh, putting more tools in the toolbox for me. Well, I mean, I'm definitely excited to see this fight because uh, you're training for everything. You, you, if it's going to be standing, if it's going to be a, uh, a striking game, I, I think you're prepared for it. If it's going to get to a Muay Thai fight, you're prepared for it. If it goes to the ground, you're prepared for it. I'm definitely excited to watch you fight, and, and I'm excited that I train with you every once in a while. And uh, I look forward to seeing you January 17th. Um, what, what, what do you have, what information do you have on your opponent? What do you know about him? You know, I don't know much about Juan Pena. Uh, actually, other than I know he, he was a, a Valley boy, uh, uh, grew up here in the Valley, and then he spent the last year or two in Dallas, uh, uh, I, I, I assume, to expand his, his you know, his MMA training, yeah. and his training. Uh, you know, the last uh, performance I saw, you know, he, he had a, you know, came out really strong. I believe it was about a year ago was his last fight. Uh, and then, of course, he ended up getting caught, uh, losing the fight uh, in, the, in the first round, getting caught with some, some heavy blows and uh, getting the TKO loss. But that's about all I know. You know, with that being said, uh, you know, I kind of like going in to this uh, w without having so much knowledge as far as what he brings to the table. It just allows me to focus on my game and what I'm going to bring to the table and what I want to accomplish. So, you know, in a, in a lot of sense, I don't have that distraction. I'm not really focused or concerned about that. Uh, but I know he's game. I know he's young and, you know, again, just eager to get out there and put on a great performance. Well, what, what can you tell the fans that are watching and uh, your opponent that are, that's watching? You know, what advice do you have for them? Uh, for the fans, just uh, come on out for an exciting performance. Going to make it a good one. Uh, for Juan Pena, my opponent, uh, be ready. Be ready to work. Be ready to work hard. Um, if it doesn't, if I don't finish it early, it's going to be a battle all the way thick and through. If I can't finish you early, then uh, it's going to be a fight all the way through. Like I said, this camp uh, around, my confidence is high as ever. Uh, athletically, I feel as strong as ever. And my skills are sharpening and sharpening. And here in the next few weeks I'll be uh, uh, definitely uh, uh, getting better you know and, and then uh, as, as far as fine-tuning uh, uh, my my uh, my agenda and my game plan so again just come on out all of you uh, fans hero FC fans uh, come on out for a great night we've got some amazing fights on the card and excited to be a part of this show yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be definitely a great show. Uh, I, I encourage you guys to go out there to Browns area uh, Jacob Brown Auditorium it's gonna go down it's gonna be some good fights so check it out guys